When I was young, my brother and I built a boat with our father. We spent several years sailing and exploring the Patuxent River. And then I met Tony. Peter and I spent many happy times on that boat. And so when we got married, we built a larger boat and ventured out into the Chesapeake Bay and its many rivers. We crewed on larger boats with dreams of sailing the world, but then life took another turn. Today, we look forward to retirement with dreams of leaving it all behind. Come join us on our journey to sail the seas. In this episode, we are going to talk about what Peter calls day two provisioning. What in the hell do you have going on here? That's I mean, a lot this, of stuff. this is insane. My, <laughs> I have a couple rules for the boat. We need it, it needs to be light, and we have to have, to have a place to store it. Otherwise, it stays on shore. So here's some of the things. Um, there is one thing I do want to point out before you get started, and that's the ship's bell. We got a comment about we need a ship's bell, and, and that is correct. Every boat needs the bell. It's the soul and heart of the boat. So here's our ship's bell. This was actually a brass bell that we salvaged uh, off an old sunken oyster by boat on the Patuxent River off of Brooms Island. We salvaged this back in the 60s. My brothers found it, they polished it all up. They uh, engraved it on, on there with the boat's name, moments in time and they also engraved the bottom of it. So this is kind of a very special bell. I think we're going to find a bracket and put it on the outboard motor bracket uh, while the boat's at dock, and then I'm going to build a nice teak stand to keep this inside the boat somewhere in the saloon area. So, very so Skipper special. Pete forgot some things in day one provisioning. These are the ship's log, the cruising log, and the maintenance log, which we all need on a cruising catamaran and we need to keep them up to date on a regular basis. So we have those. Peter and I will be sailing our first season, shaking our boat out on the Chesapeake Bay. And this is a cruising guide for the Chesapeake Bay. It's our local waters and we're very excited about it. And then we also have chart books for the upper and lower Chesapeake Bay. These are, I believe, laminated, so they, if they, you know, you don't have to worry about them getting wet. And then there's these quick reference guides, one for, these are also plastic. You don't have, no need for them to be wet. I mean, to worry about that. The, uh, for weather, um, a quick re reference for celestial navigation, and then also um, for knots. So he forgot all of These that. cherubs are special. They're hand carved. They're from a village where my family's from, which is Oberammergau, Germany. The tradition is to put them in the bedroom. They're like guardian angels and they keep you safe. I have two of these. They have been blessed. They will go into each of the stateroom. I am still looking to get a third one for the app starboard stateroom. Um, we have purchased sheets. I do plan on getting a mattress cover, a full zip around waterproof mattress cover for all of our mattresses and probably a fitted mattress pad type thing over top of that. And then we bought sheets. We like the Giza sheets from my pillow. So we did get those, and then these are, and then are um, these are cotton. They're very lightweight, not hard to make. I made a bed, one of the beds one day, and the sheets were really heavy. I'm like, I don't want heavy, heavy sheets. So these are lightweight, very comfortable cotton. And then these are microfiber. And I thought, well, these might be nicer on colder nights. So depending on the season, we do plan to keep two sets of sheets, one on the bed and one stored in each cabin. And we did get full size for the app cabin. We decided to go with white because it was easier to care for. Then I was looking at decorations and these are these are really pretty. I decided to go with flamingos because Monica, our daughter, has sailed with us some and she thought we should do the whole boat in flamingos, but we said no. So I decided on these wonderful um, throws to use as a bed cover. And they're full size, I'm not showing you the whole thing, but they're full size, very lightweight, easy to wash, 
and they can carry them around the boat if they need a, 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 a you know, a throw or, or a blanket sitting in the cab, uh, main cabin or out on the, um, in the cockpit. So we have flamingos for the uh, aft cabin and we have sea turtles for the um, forward port cabin. It's hard to show you this. This one's quite larger because it's um, big enough for queen size. Now, I might change my mind on these at some point, but we think for first getting started in our first season, this is a reasonable thing. It's lightweight, it's not hard to make the bed, it's cozy, and it can be used in all seasons. So easy to wash. So there's that. I had trouble finding something like that for our cabin. And so I settled on these, it's a duvet cover and pillow covers that have our emblem on it, which I was excited about, that our bed cover I used and I piled all this stuff on it so you can't really see it. But it has the name on there too. Um, and the idea is you stuff it with like a, a easy to wash, comfortable, seasonable weight comforter. So, and it would be easy to wash because you could just take the comforter out of the duvet cover and wash the duvet cover and put the comforter right, put it right back in. So that's the plan. And the next thing is pillows. We're still looking into comfortable pillows. This one I just happened to get when I was on a trip and I needed a pillow because I didn't have one. Um, and it's copper something or other. I picked it up at Walmart, but it's very comfortable. It's kind of foam like. It's, it, I liked it. It was comfortable. It says copper something. But then I bought this nice pillow cover for it, and then you would put a pillowcase over it. It just keeps the pillows clean. We also decided we're going to use standard size pillows in all the cabins. Next, pots and pans. These pots and pans are very lightweight and they um we've tried them out these are gotham steel and it's the newest one that they have and you can use metal utensils with them it won't scratch and we've been we've been using one of them just to see how it works and it really does work well we wanted a lightweight pot and pots and pans we also had been using this style pot it has a strainer built into the lid and Peter wanted to use this on the boat. And it is a good size um, for pasta and different things. And you have that added strainer built right in. So we definitely wanted that. So then we just got the pots and pans that match. We are very happy with them. We've been using this square one, which I think would work really well on the boat. Um, and, but it does come with two that are round. So I don't know that we need all of them, but we'll see. And then it comes with two, it came with two pans. This also came with a built-in strainer, which we could also use as a regular strainer in the kitchen, except this is gonna sit down directly on something. So maybe we could come up with something to put a few feet in that, you know, two or three feet so that it will sit up and drain. We could also use that for steaming too. And you could also use, yes, that's what it's made for, is steaming. So this this is, um, that's, we were debating on a different pan, pot, a larger pot, but we might go with this one since it came with this. The larger pot looks like this. We use it for soups and stews. We just don't know if we're gonna need that right away or not, so we're just gonna play it by ear. We might not need all of these pots and pans right away. But it is a lightweight set. So it fits P Peter's requirements and mine too. The other um, thing we use a lot at home are these different sizes of strainers. Um, we were debating on what kind we want to put on the boat and whether we'll need all of them or not. This comes in really handy. And then we also have a larger one that's more maybe this size but it, it's made with a handle and it can sit over top of a pot. So we're debating on those. These are the ones we use at home. And the other thing we definitely wanna have on the boat is um, these nesting mixing bowls. They come with lids and we do like them. They store nicely, it's lightweight. You can use them for storage or for mixing. Um, and there's a variety of sizes. Peter and I drink coffee every morning. We love having our coffee together. So it's really important to us. This is a French press. 
style coffee pot. We have been using it on our, the charters we've been on and so we're very used to it. We do like this. Works very well. We can heat the water in the microwave or on the stove. Um, and then we need coffee mugs and this is nice because it's insulated and it has this lid on it so you don't have to worry about spilling your coffee. We got these in Nags Head and they're really a nice size and they have a nice sturdy handle on them. These are also insulated. You could use them hot or cold. We got them mostly for cold and like wine or tea or iced tea or any kind of drink, you know, you could use in this or if you could use it for hot too. But I think we would need to get the other kind of lid because this is more of a sipping kind of lid. So, but nonetheless, it will work. We had these engraved. So everything we've talked about so far are things we did need. Um, but we did enjoy those sundowners down in the Bahamas. And so we started looking into options for wine. One was the chilled cup that, that's insulated. And those work great for that, no problem. Um, but if you want to use a stem, we were looking into st uh, the stem. I think this is the polycarbonate ones. They're very sturdy. They don't bend. They look, they look and feel really nice in the hand, but they are plastic. They do stack, which is kind of cool for the boat. These, this is Triton, I believe. It bends a little, um, and there are some that are even thinner than that. I don't like that as much because of that. And kind of a wine glass snob. I don't really like plastic for glasses. So we did find some when we were at the boat show. We're gonna look into them. They were really, you couldn't tell. They, they, I looked at them, I'm going, they look like glass. But they weren't Triton, so they weren't thin and they, 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 you could engrave them. Peter also got these uh, granite stone things that you can chill and chill your wine without having to make ice. And he got me some of these little ones. They're whiskey stones. Whiskey stones. For my whiskey without diluting them. <laughs> yes. And we have um, these cap, bottle cap things that my daughter got us for Christmas. They were in my stocking. And you can, they will seal the bottle. So if you open a bottle of wine, you don't have to worry about like it's spilling out in the refrigerator and it will lay on its side and not leak. Is that assuming that we don't finish the bottle That's of assuming wine? that. <laughs> They're gonna think we're alcoholics. And the other thing to go with the cocktails is Peter got me these for my Christmas stocking. They're, I didn't take them out, but these are little seahorses and these are dolphins. So cocktail picks when we wanna get really fancy. And when we were at the boat show this past time, there was a person who was making these. It's a Lazy Susan, so it spins. It is a little heavy but I thought it would be nice in the middle of the table if I wanted to put condiments in the middle and then it would be easy for everybody to reach everything. That's a nice sea scene, so I really like it. Next, we have knives. Um, we were at the boat show and we found a great place. It's called Rhineland Cutlery and they engraved our name on the, on the knife. I don't know if you can see it, it's right here. This is a chef's knife. It's really a, I can't say it right, it's San, Santoku. It's a slightly different style, but it's the same, does pretty much the same thing as a, a chef's knife. So we definitely wanted one of these. And it comes with a case. This is a fillet knife for Peter. And he catches all those fish that we're gonna fry up. And then this are um, steak knives also from the same company with our name of the boat engraved in it. They're very, very nice steak knives. We got a set of four of those. And then we have these knives, which are um, basic kitchen knives. Talked back and forth about what kind of plates and dishes we wanted on the boat. We did not want anything breakable. And most everybody goes with melamine because it, it isn't breakable and you can get nice sets. We were on the fence because we are going to have a microwave and you cannot microwave melamine. So we ended up getting two sets, but we're gonna have six uh, place settings for each on the boat. The melamine I fell in love with when I saw it. I love this set. It's so pretty and it has, it's blue on this side. It has, uh, it looks like the sea to us and we just really like the pattern on it. 
and it comes with a larger plate, a smaller plate, and a bowl, and then also two platters, a round one, and an oval. And I don't think we'll need any other platters besides that. You can use plates to use as a platter too. Um, and it, it's just a, we thought of that as our nice set for if we want to celebrate something special on the boat. Um, the set that we bought, oh, let me go to the cups. I'm not sure, I'm on the fence about these. These are plastic. They are pretty. This one's more bluish. It's hard to tell. This is more bluish. This is more teal like green and then this is sort of a purplish blue they go nice with the set i'm just on the fence we may go ahead and use something like this um and and not use those i haven't decided don't know if i like all the plastic and then for our everyday set we decided on this set these are made of wheat wheat straw they're called um they are microwavable um, it comes with, uh, it's a set of six. It comes with these little cups, which I kind of like, you know, they're not bad. And then um, it comes with these bowls, which have not a big base on the bottom. Peter wasn't sure about that, but they're nice and deep and very useful, I think. And the plates have these nice lip on them. I don't know if you can see that. Hold it out close for you. But there's like quite a bit, maybe an inch lip on it. And then there's the larger size. So these are great, especially if you're under passage, I think. You wouldn't have to worry as much about things spilling off. Um, and you can microwave them. And then there's this set. We went ahead and got an extra set of bowls. These are more sturdy because they have a flatter bottom on them. You can see here. And they, similar colors. And they also, we just thought they would, all of these bowls, would if by getting these wonderful little silicone lids you now have serving bowls and you don't have to have separate stuff for that so we're looking into other sizes though because it doesn't quite fit the way we want so we're going to look into other sizes in addition sizes. to the fact that they can be microwaved we do like the weed straw because they are very lightweight and they're good for the environment so we felt like that was a really good thing um, the next thing for the kitchen is the silverware. I don't know. I really like these, but we got them and they're kind of, it's kind of crazy because this, they're really odd shaped spoons. Um, the teaspoon, they're kind of big, really, um, and narrow, so interesting. But they're this really pretty pattern. We liked them for the boat. And the nice thing about it is the forks are like similar in size so we figure you know six place settings we have we'll have enough forks for i don't know because there's an it's an eight piece set it'll be plenty of forks and spoons we have more forks we have more than we then we have friends so we'll be fine <laughs> so then there's a um, serving spoons that come with it i can't reach them but peter will show them to you um, I don't know how much we'll use the serving spoons because we also will have these silicone ones that are over here. Quite a few. These are nice. Uh, they can heat. They match our color scheme pretty nicely. There's. Um, we might need some more spatulas, but other than that, it's even got this nice, nice pasta salad server thing. So um, I don't know whether we really needed the serving spoons, but they came with it. So. Um, some other utensils that we use all the time. This is a micro um, grater thing. Peter uses one here at home all the time, so we wanted one for the boat. This is a uh, juicer. It's really great. You just put the lemon or lime down in there and it, it just works wonderful. We use this all the time too. So there's that. Of course, we need a corkscrew, and there's another one here that I think I'm gonna put on the boat that Peter got me that's really pretty. It has a nice, it's just really nice. I wish I'd put it here for you to show you, but bottle opener. This we got at Peter's parents' house when we were going through their things after they passed away. And we, I said, I wanna keep that because no electricity, and I can mix with it, it makes it easy, so. An old fashioned, very, it's probably antique. So anyway, we're gonna put that on the boat. 
Um, the other thing I have here is a, ba a basket and it's about three inches deep. I thought this might fit on that space between the galley and the um, upper part of the, the main cabin on top of the cabinets as a catch-all for whatever, you know, sunscreen, sunglasses, hats, whatever. or you could keep napkins and snacks and whatever in them. And I'll probably do a little bit more of that. I'm gonna look for something that'll fit there nicely. Any ideas? And then for my way. dish draining. I found this at Walmart, or maybe it was TJ Maxx, I don't know. But it comes apart, so it stores flat. It has a space for, you could set your plates up to dry. It has a place where you can put other things so they won't skid around. This is for your utensils and it pops right on there. I really like that part of it. I don't really like this much because it doesn't have any grip, So, but it came with it, so it's here. I don't know whether we'll use that. What we do like are these. These are made out of silic silicone, I think. And they, you can put hot, they can, they have these ridges in them for draining. You can just set them. I use one here at home and it's great. You don't need a dish rack really because it has these little grooves in it where water can collect. Um, we bought a few different sizes. The nice thing about it is you can also set hot stuff on this. So it would protect the counter, you know, the countertops in the galley. And when we're cooking in the cockpit, you know, the only place to really set anything is on the little table. So this will come in handy for that. Protect it a little bit so I don't get messed up. And I bought a few different sizes just in case. We're going to try them out. Last but not least, least, Peter made a crack about pillows, I think, in one of the earlier episodes. Uh, we did talk about using pillows as a, um, you know, if you're out in the, we call it the Monica Lounge, but if you're out in the forward deck and you and you want to lounge in the lounge area you might want a pillow and you can get these wonderful inserts that are outdoor rated so they can get wet so the idea was that we would use throw pillows in the in the main cabin and put maybe one maybe two in each of the other cabins so that people have a pillow if they are on board with us that they can take outside and use so we have a few here and we haven't decided for the for the uh, one room i had the turtle uh, throw and so we we thought about sea turtles i want to call it it's the starboard cabin i want to use sea turtles so there's this one or maybe this one if we don't use this in the main cabin so there's that and then there's um for the aft cabin on the starboard side i found this really cute flamingo one they're all outdoor rated so the these can all go outside and then in the main cabin I don't know about you, but when I was sailing, even in the in the warmer months, in the evenings, it sometimes got chilly. So I had this here. It's a throw. I'm going to use it in the main cabin. And then we were trying to decide on the pillows for that. I really like this one. It's a mermaid. <laughs> and then this one I thought really is pretty. It, this one is not outdoor rated, but it is soft and comfortable, and it looks like the sea. And I thought it would look really pretty on the um, on the on the leather seats that we're going to have in the in the main cabin so but peter liked these and they are very pretty and they're bright um and they would look good in there too so we haven't quite decided it's going to be one of those decide um when we get the boat kind of thing so there's various uh scenes there was four in the set i don't really feel like we need four in the main cabin, but you know, don't need all those pillows, but a couple is nice. So I kind of thought the two of these and the, and the uh, mermaid would be nice, but I don't know. And then for our cabin, Peter liked the crab. Let's give Tony a test. What should they do if they like what we're doing? Uh, click the like, thumbs up, subscribe, and click the notification bell. And comment below. Oh my God, she's got it. She's got it right. 32, 33 episodes later, she's got it. My George. Oh, please. My Lord. <laughs>《1260 Moments in Time was packed up and loaded aboard the large container ship Marco Polo. 
She left Vietnam on January 21st, 2024. She have already completed her stops in Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, and Sri Lanka. As Marco Polo was leaving Sri Lanka, the shipping company CMA, CGM, informed all its customers that as of February 1st, 2024, and until further notice, all services initially routed via the Red Sea Passage will now follow the Cape of Good Hope routing. This was good news to me and Tony. We were really worried about possible damage or shipping attacks on Red Sea that's still going on. The new route added nine days to the Norfolk ETA. The ETA for a moments in time arrival is now March 8th, 2024. Despite the delay in moments in time arrival into Norfolk, we're okay with this. We were really worried about everything that was going on in the Red Sea. Currently, Marco Polo is off the west coast of Africa. Hopefully, moments in time is safely on board. Excitement can't even begin to describe how Tony and I are feeling at the moment.